What is going on, everybody? Bobby Fire, my man, Rody. We're going to be talking through week seven of the NFL. Ready for a big week. Um, can't quite seem to hit the the, the main slates. I, I keep doing well in the showdown, so I can't complain too much. But, man, it's just been a little, little bit off so far. So uh, I've got a few things I'm, I'm targeting this week. How are you doing? Any overall thoughts on this week? Anything that you want to drop in before we get into position by position? Oh, yeah. I'm looking here at like to get a big week myself here going, you know, we've been on a lot of the right plays. It's just, I feel like you just haven't put it. I just haven't put anything together. Right. You know, yeah. I've been on some of the right fades and some of the right plays and it just those right plays are in the wrong lineups and you know, you know how it goes. So like, we're just close to getting it, getting it combined right here. So soon. So hopefully mm -hmm. we hit a big one. I hope so, man. Do you want to share your screen for this and we'll go yeah, through yeah, it? Yeah. I was just waiting till we did the intro. Yeah. And then, yeah. Uh, yeah. Let's, let's do it. We'll get into uh, it here. You know, we're back to 10 games again. Um, and, yep. I mean, honestly, like, I, I went through a thing when me and Sheets recorded earlier. Like, it, it's been really – mostly – most games have been just awful football. Like, like seriously, like some of the worst football. Boring, slow, everybody trying to prolong the game. Last week, the unders went 12-2-1. I think it's the most the unders have ever won in a week. Um maybe second most, but just, 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 just annoying a little bit. And and here we have another total, another, you know, there was a while when we used to have like five 50 point plus games to choose from and we got none again. Um, so just, just, or I guess we got, I guess we got one, um, which we'll, we'll figure out. Well, no, it's, it's, actually, it's actually below 50. Um, anyway, uh, so let's get into positions. Uh, you know, obviously they're going to lead to who we're going to be stacking. I'm going to make sure I get my current exposures and they're subject to change. We're recording this on Thursday. Um, but at quarterback right now, I have uh, your your guy at the top of my list, uh, Jordan Love. <laughs> um, so Jordan Love, Justin Herbert, Lamar Jackson, and Josh Allen are my are my top quarterbacks. Uh, just ahead, actually, I think if you factor in uh, FanDuel too, Geno Smith might be my highest own, and then Geno Smith would be next. Uh, Trevor Lawrence and Pat Mahomes. Um, that's what I've got right now, and I am probably going to be tweaking that but those are that those are my favorite which we'll talk about some game stacks at the end but obviously you can tell the games i like based on that yeah i mean those are all good good plays um do you are you thinking about getting a little what watson should be back right he practiced today i believe right at 5700 in a dome any interest at 5700 there no I still have him as projected out um, okay. I today, but I, but I, I'm going to wait to see on that one. I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm very high on the, uh, the Cleveland defense this week is my number one defense to give gotcha. a yeah. So maybe that maybe, I mean, there's some correlation issues, but yeah, I mean, in a dome against a team that's given up a lot of points and actually been able to stay competitive. So uh, if he does play, I definitely will might look that direction. Yeah. I think it's a price thing. It's just really cheap. So if he does play, um, obviously we, we do the show on Thursdays guys. So make sure you check out our show on Sundays as always at 11 o'clock. Cause a lot of these questionable tags will get cleared up by then uh, around our show time on Sunday. So make sure you check back in for that. Um, my quarterbacks as well. I definitely like the Geno Smith call um, behind the Seahawks. They're playing a very fair, pretty good matchup this week. You know um, we do got my chargers back on the slate, but man, Herbert's priced up a little bit. Um, I'd say they don't have a very good total on the Chargers side. I mean, I know the Chiefs defense has been playing better with Chris Jones back, you know, smashing a lot of sacks, but I, I, I think they can score more than 21 points. They just really mess up at the end of the game. <laughs> Big time. Crazy, kick, kick too many field goals and miss too many fourth and ones in the red zone. So, yeah. <laughs> so maybe they won't get there. You never know. Um, but yeah. You know, we haven't talked much about Lamar Jackson. We did earlier in the season, and then he, he's got a really good total in this game. But, I mean, I, I mean, what are we not giving any credit to the Lions? I, I live in Michigan, so yeah, these Lions, that, that total for the Lions seems a little low. Baltimore's not the same defense this year, right? Not quite, but they, they looked a little better. And I, I agree, though. That, 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 that game, the, the initial thoughts feels like a very big over for me. I'm sort of with you. Yeah, that's that's what I was getting. It might be my hot take of the, of the, of the day. Um, we will do that later, but that's my favorite part of the show, if you didn't know. Um, but maybe the over on this game and Jared Goff at 6,400, I don't mind. Mm -hmm. um, so let's, you know, that's why I want to talk about it a little bit because that quarterback, we want some upside scores. And if nobody's on these kind of quarterbacks at 2% ownership, 
He's, I mean, golf, golf's been putting up 27, 28 points there a couple games. Mm-hmm. He's been up in the top of the lineups, guys. I mean, there's no no reason at 6,400 he can't get there. Um, so, yeah, I like a lot of those same quarterbacks in those games. I'd probably say that Detroit game – I mean, it is outside, so he's not he's not in a dome. I, sh- I should have noted that. Deshaun yeah. Watson in the dome if he's in. But Josh Allen, you know, he's got he's got a high price there. New England isn't the same defense as before. So, you know, he could drop a 40-point fantasy week as well. Um, and Geno Smith, probably one of my favorites. Mahomes, he's a little priced up a little bit. And Jordan Love, I got to go. I think this Denver total game is looking a little high. So I like that Jordan Love call as well. So, I mean, those mm-hmm. are probably the game. I'm going to target probably those games and be pretty, pretty consistent in those games for my quarterbacks as well. Mm-hmm. Yeah, absolutely. The game I didn't play a quarterback from that I, that I just want to say, because my favorite games are basically the afternoon games. I like Seattle, Arizona. I like Denver, Green Bay. Um, I like I, in, the, in the morning session, I like Detroit, Baltimore, but I like the Chargers, KC. The, the one game I didn't find myself playing either quarterback that I like the game stack separate from the quarterbacks is Atlanta and Tampa Bay, especially when you get over on FanDuel and you look over at Mike Evans and Chris Godwin's price. And that's a game that we could do some business with. Uh, potentially as well. I just want to throw that out there. Uh, running backs, do you want to start it off or do you want me to start it off? Um, I mean, I can I can start it off if you want to switch it up here on the running back. Yeah, I mean, this is usually the most difficult position. Some weeks we have an abundance of running backs and lots of value, and then other weeks we have a, a tougher a tougher slate of running backs. You know, Austin Eckler priced up at 8600 in that game we really like. He's going to get low ownership, guys. Uh, I, I get his price is crazy, but he does catch a lot of passes. They're going to need a lot of dump offs. He didn't look very good the last game. His first game back, maybe had a little rust, but maybe he gets back to it. He projects okay. I like Josh Jacobs. He's another guy who gets a lot of work, projects really well as well. Um, Kenneth Walker was a guy on last week I had. I think I think he was in, he scored 17. He was up there for, I mean, not many backs scored big. Mostert had the big week, but I mean, Walker had 17 last week, so it was pretty good. I haven't been on Bijan much this year. Um, Aaron Jones, he's priced up a little bit. I like Bobby's calling Pacheco here in that same game on the other side, but he's going to be the chalk here, one sixty one hundred. Chargers just, you know, the Chargers did stop the Cowboys run de- uh, run a, a quite a bit. The Pollard didn't do much on them, so it's true for what what it's worth in that game. Um, but it could be a totally different uh, a game this week. You know, I'm interested to see if Jameer Gibbs comes back because I do like that Lions game a little bit. On the other side, of, we needed someone to stack with the Lamar side. I like him a little bit. Um, and let's see if there's any value running backs that are popping. Walker, well, Rashad White. One, one major one who's going to be like 60% owned if, if, if things go a certain way. Yeah, I'll let you cover him. Okay. I'm just kind of getting hitting on some of my other backs. Is it going to yeah. be maybe one of these guys here? This one. I'll let – I'll let uh, – Bobby cover that one. So those okay. are kind of the backs. I'm going to stay. I'm not doing a lot of lineups this week. Again, I think I'm, I'm, I'm trying to get some single entry lineup builds and three entry max builds um, fine tune this week a little bit. So like, I, I'm going to probably stick with, like I built a small pool last week and I just kind of mixed and match, you know, the main guys that we liked last week on the 11 o'clock show. And I, I'm going to probably do that again this week and just find these gems that I like at the top, you know, Jacobs, Walker, Eckler, guys that I'm always on and probably mm-hmm. sprinkling some Gibbs and maybe find one of these cheap guys or, or the play that Bobby's going to talk about. Yeah. So, so Zach Evans is current. So just for what it's worth. So the Rams don't have any running backs that they, that they expected to play. Zach Evans was a sixth round pick this year, uh, sort of is being project, projected as if he's going to be for sure. The, the runaway thing. I'm a little worried about a, a committee thing. The Rams signed two running backs this week. And you also have Royce Freeman, who they may end up using just as much. So it's a little nerve wracking, but you do have the, the flat 4K price on Zach Evans, who's the best projected point per dollar play on the slate by a ton. Um, he may be 50% on plus, uh, maybe higher. Uh, it, it's it's really going to be how comfortable people feel with it. They're going to really give him all that work. So I, I don't feel entirely comfortable. I, I have him as my highest owned running back currently, and I don't even have him near the field. So it's a little strange. I'm spread out early in the week in running back, and I'm going to tighten it up as the week goes on. But here are the guys I'm looking at. 
Uh, I think both Ford and Kareem Hunt are in play. Uh, I like I like Cleveland in that game. I like their defense, and I like playing them with Ford or Kareem Hunt. I think that 5,100 5, to that 5K at very low ownership because the Evans thing is a way to get different. I think Rashad White, who I don't usually like playing, is another way not to get different, but certainly going to be lower on than Evans. So those are my, my, my main cheap guys. Then the guys who I really want to spend up for, uh, everyone wants Kenneth Walker. Uh, I will probably be under the field just because of the ownership right now, but I, I do like him. I also am very high on Seattle's passing game in this this week. Isaiah Pacheco, that just feels like a, at his high ownership, maybe we should look elsewhere. But again, makes sense on paper. Um, I like Jameer Gibbs, assuming that he plays. I might, like, Aaron Jones might be in half my lineups by the time the week's out. Uh, I, I, I'm big on the Packers this week. Um, I really, really like that that game, and I love Aaron Jones. So I'm very, very high on him. I like spending up – if I'm not spending up on him, Brian Robinson, Kamara, Walker, Pacheco, Gibbs, um, those are the guys I'm looking at. And I'm just, I'm just a little below the field on Jacobs because we haven't seen it as much this year, and I am uh, – I don't know. I just feel like a, I, I, I'm going to reserve my my thoughts on the rest of the running backs till Sunday because I'm, I'm still trying to figure it out. I'm trying to get a better feel for who's playing – we also don't know if, if Roshan Johnson's playing for Chicago this week, which means Deontay Foreman, uh, Don, sorry, Dante Foreman will be popular again. So it's it's just a lot of stuff that we still have to figure out. Um, to, you know, it still feels very early in the week, and we may not know till Saturday or Sunday who's even going to get a bulk of the the Rams share. And by the way, we may not even know then. So that's the stuff we got to look out for. Yeah, this week might be the week finally where the running backs bust. Have we had a week where the running back chalk is bust? Bus, you know, I I don't know. These thirty percent owned guys seem to just be nuking, and fifty percent owned Mostert last week started off a little shaky, and then just exploded. And then just explode. Yeah, in one quarter, you you get all the points. So you like need. we thought we were doing good, not having a lot of the guy, and then all of a sudden, shoot, you need the guy. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, you, so yeah, I like that call on Evans. He's four K. Um, I I didn't want to take all Bobby stars. I I did see his stars here. I did see this last star guy here, so I didn't want to talk all about all of them. I do like. You know, I, d- I did mention Aaron Jones. He is a little bit priced for a guy who hasn't been playing much or doing much this year, but he's been talking. He says he hope he's giving a spark to the Packers this week coming back. So he's excited to get back out there from what the beat writers and all the pe- reporters are saying and stuff. Mm-hmm. So, like, that's a good thing. And, uh, yeah, so may- maybe this week will be a little different with the with the chalkbacks. Uh, you need one of these lower-owned guys that we talked about this week. Mm-hmm. Kind of a sneaky big game for them, right? Like they need to. This is like a, a a game where you can't you can't lose on the road. You can't lose to Denver this year if you want to make the playoffs. Yeah. Basically, um, all right. Well, I'll, I'll jump in. And I'll start off with wide receiver. So I, I tagged my my four guys, um, and they're I, Joshua Palmer, Zay Flowers, Marquise Brown, and Cooper Cup. Cooper Cup, I I, I love this week, but I, I'm also okay if you wanted to take the fade route because the price is so high. And uh, maybe play Nakua instead, but I, I still like Cup quite a bit, and I do have him as one of my highest own. I ended up getting to a lot more Kendrick Bourne in my early builds than I thought. I sort of like the idea of splitting up if I'm playing the Raiders thing, like you know, um, I'm sorry, not the Raiders thing. Uh, I so I sort of like the idea of just getting like a little bit of exposure. He had 11 targets, 10 catches last week. If if that's what they're going to do when they're down, and I expect that to be the case again, I, I'm sort of going to keep keep trying to take some shots with Bourne. Um, but Keenan Allen, the obvious one, the other obvious one to my core is is Keenan Allen. Um, I love uh, Cortland Sutton. He's my favorite Denver run back uh, in that, that 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 Packer game that I'm gonna have all of. I'll have all the Packer receivers probably like 15%. I, I'm gonna. It's mostly. It's actually probably gonna be a little higher on Watson for me. And then I'll I'll get some Reed and Dobbs as well. I'm not gonna look at the last week's numbers and have it affect me at all. Uh, some sneaky-ish plays. I like Gabe Davis this week. I like t- uh, Terry McLaurin. Um, my then I, then I have my twenty percent of the sneakiest play on the slate. Probably, well, the guy who's going to explode and break the slate and have the best day of anybody at some point. Um, it's not probably going to be this week, but I'm still going to take him at thirty-eight hundred. That's Jamison Williams. This is one of the most talented receivers in the NFL who has between suspensions an injury not played that much in the NFL and he's playing like 30 to 40% of the snaps for Detroit right now. Uh, just keep an eye out because Jamison Williams is ready to explode. Uh, you're going to see some monster plays from this guy as the season progresses. He's super talented. So uh, I guess that would be the the main guys for me. Um, uh, the, the Packers, the Detroit wide receivers, the, uh, the, you know, uh, the, the flowers from Baltimore sort of in, you know, in lockstep with the games I'm stacking. Who do you like this 
Yeah, I was just trying to scroll through. I couldn't even find Jamison Williams. Yeah, hey, that's what happens. Not even projection, barely. It must not be, I guess. I mean, we we you like this kid for people who don't know was one of the best players in college football for you know his time in college football. And yeah. what was he? The number was he the eighth overall pick? I can't remember exactly what he was. Yeah, he lines did. got him somewhere there early. Um, you sure it wasn't the uh, yeah sixteenth pick? Maybe it was sixteenth. That, that could, could be right. He had he had uh, he had the 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 issues the the off. Yeah, court. he was out a full year pretty much. So like the injury yeah. kind of. Really, sort sort of the word was that he would have been the number one overall play pick. You know what I mean? It, yeah. It, oh, yeah. Higher than what he was. Yeah. For yeah. Sure. Yeah. So yeah, I like him. I, mean, I think that kind of leads back into my Lions stack. You know, um, on the other side of that, to be different this week, maybe you know, if you if you are stacking these chalk running backs we talked about, you got to get different with these lower owned stack plays, and maybe the Lions stacks one of them, or in a, in a game that we think is going to go over, right? Mm-hmm. So, yeah, obviously Cooper Cup's been my favorite receiver. Just the volume he gets is amazing, but his price up now since he's returned. Keenan Allen's another one of those guys that have massive volume. With Mike Williams out, he's a key play. You know, Diggs is even starting to see his price go up a little bit too um, just because of his massive volume this year. You know, Gabe Davis is a good call on Bobby. I really like Gabe Davis a lot. Diggs is getting a lot of red zone looks, a lot of balls thrown to him. He's just really getting utilized quite a bit. Gabe Day, I, I, I like a lot of secondary receivers on these other teams, though. I'm on St. Brown's right here in that Detroit stack we talked about. You know, um, I do like that. You know, Tyler Lockett, we got a pair of Seattle with somebody. Um, him mm-hmm. and DK Metcalf are still reasonable price at six and sixty eight hundred. I kind of like that. Goes with my stack we talked about. Um, Jacoby Myers at Chicago here. I really like his price tag um, just because he does get a lot of the volume. Um, I don't know. Mm-hmm. Uh, we don't have any who the quarterback is, right? Is he good to go? Which one? Which one? Um, oh, for, oh, for, oh, we don't know who it is. It, it could be Hoyer. It could be O'Connell. I'm not yeah, sure. Which they're one. both projected actually for Vegas here. So yeah. He knows. Yeah. We don't even know. But, I mean, he's been getting a lot of work, and his price is good. But it, it could all change. So maybe we want to be under on that a little bit. Um, Watson's a good call because he's only 5,600. I think he looked phenomenal in camp early on in the year. Sutton, I like him better than Jerry Judy, to be honest. And he's a little bit cheaper. That's a good call by Bobby. Um, you know, Palmer's here at 4,800. That Bobby's got tagged as well. Someone needs to catch a ball. He's getting a lot of work in some red zone looks. For 4,800 is not a bad price. Um and then 5,900 for Gabe Davis as well. Um, I know you, you mentioned Terry McLaurin, but, man, Curtis Sam was getting some work at 4,000 flat. You know, we got our Josh Downs playing that same game, but we, we do like the Browns' defense, obviously. But um, And Wondell Robinson at 3,800 might be a chalkier play. Yeah, he's kind of chalky for sure in that, in, the, in that game. He's getting a lot of work, though, so that'll be interesting. you know. And if you also want to get the third-string receiver for Seattle there, the $3,900, and Wabe, um, we, a lot of people have been playing him a little bit. I know we've talked about him in previous shows and stuff. Um, you know, give him a chance. He's getting some looks a little bit more. So, I mean, he's viable. So, um, yeah, Jane Reed down here, some 3,700 receivers. You know, you know, Tony at 3,800 in that other smash game. He's getting a little bit of ownership, but nothing too crazy. But someone's got to catch the ball for Casey. He's just so wild. So, if you do want to stack that, it's probably usually best to go Mahomes, Kelsey. But if you want to throw in a receiver, you got you got Rice up here. 4,700. He's, he's getting a little bit more. I, you know, I'd rather hope for Tony to explode. I know is Hardman going to play this week. I know they just traded for him. You know, I don't know what they're going to do with him. I mean, it's not like they were in love with him when he was there, even. Yeah. But because the guys are out, so I, I don't know. I, I'm gonna, have to, I probably will do the same thing you said and take some shots on Tony. Yeah, if you're if you're MME and guys like you got MVS at 3,200, Tony at 3,800. You know, maybe you don't want to do a ton of it, but like maybe do a couple lineups with one of those guys or even Sky Moore at 30. Look, it's just funny. All their receivers are like 3K, and you just don't know. The easiest way is play Kelsey Mahomes if you're going to do it, really. But So, I mean, those are kind of the receivers I'm on. Basically, it goes with some of these game stacks that we that we talk about with our QB world, with QBs, you know, that we'll talk about in some game stacks here in a little bit. Yeah, I'm going to throw out that Godwin and Lockett are both incredibly priced. And actually, I, I would say Marquise Brown is reasonable, too. But, like, the, yeah. Lockett and are, their price is very different on FanDuel compared to DraftKings, and I, I'm, I'm going to get my exposure over there. In fact, my main build over there is a Lockett, Metcalf, Geno, uh, running it back with with uh, Marcus Brown over there. Uh, just yeah. Week two a few years ago, I won a lot of money in uh, um, 
with uh, Russell Wilson, Lockett, and Metcalf won. I thought I was going to take the 100K for first, but I ended up second for 25K. Fast that's, forward two years later, the prize is 4X. Yeah. And, you know, why couldn't I hit it when second was 100K and first was 200K, you know? I know. 75 grand more, but now I won it. I won it. I won a lot more when I, my, the prizes were smaller. <laughs> <laughs> the first like five years ago in their biggest tournament uh their big buy you know it was like a 555 or whatever and it was like 50, it was forty thousand. and i'm just going and i won by like 30 points yeah. and it was like, one of those days where you just you have like the two one percenters who go off um and i was like damn man what if that was now like give, give me the 200k i know right now you're thinking even bigger than you or even smaller than the last few years ago you know so it's crazy what's what's happened you know this, to the game here yeah, this is alive. Um, all right, so I'll jump over to tight end. Do you want? Do you want to start it off, or do you want me to do it? Uh, if you want to start, it should be short. I think it's pretty short. Yep. Um, it's pretty straightforward this week. Uh, I'm going to to the chalk. One of the chalky plays I'm going to have is Travis Kelsey. Um, and I like Luke Musgrave, but I think you have a ton of pivot options in the same price range, and his ownership is going to be higher. Uh, Zach Ertz should have some ownership as well, but I, I would be lower on those guys. And I would like wait to see what happens with Kincaid. And if Kincaid is out, I'm going to be all over Dawson Knox this week. I already like the Bills hammer stack um, a little bit anyway. I don't like the necessarily the only run back I like is Bourne in that game. But I, I do like the Dawson Knox. But spending up for Travis Kelsey, Mark Andrews is definitely something I will have most of my exposure to. And then at the lower end, I want to try to get some pivots off of Musgrave, uh, who I do like, but I just don't want to overexpose. So I'll play some Dawson Knox in that case. I'll play some Tyler Higby. Um, I'll play some Sam Laporta. I just think I'd rather spend up for the other guys. Uh, so I think I think that Pitts, Knox. Um, I, I do have a, oh a little bit of Evan Ingram. Or, or uh, no, sorry, a little bit of not Evan Ingram. Excuse me. That was that was the, the problem I did. So when I'm sorting my player exposures, I was looking. I, I had tonight's game included, so I was trying to include stuff. And I'm like, wait a minute, what are these plays? So it kind of threw me off because I didn't click click the right game set. Um, cause it's showing all my plays for this week, including my plays tonight. So that's my bad guys. Um, I will give my exact head. And so yeah, Ertz, Ertz, Knox, um, Kelsey, Musgrave, Andrews with Andrews and Kelsey being the highest on for me. Okay. I'm in group. Yeah. I, I did forget to say that during running backs, you did say Kamara too earlier. I was like, um, it, 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 I'm looking at my my exposures and like it's it's so, I just forgot to click the button so my bad on the Kamara thing that's just an accidental. Yeah, accident. no, I I I, did, I forgot to mention that you said that that was funny, but I was gonna do a, like a joke like, hey, we got showdown videos coming up soon and we're gonna be talking about Kamara in a minute, you know. But um, obviously, yeah. you'll watch this after the showdown, so maybe we want some big money or something. But um, yeah. yeah, tight end should be simple. Like Kelsey is a really good play. Obviously, Musgrave's a great play. We've been on him kind of a lot this year. He gets a lot of work. Um, Sam Laporta, with people keep not playing this guy, gets a lot of balls. That you know that I like doing that QB receiver tight end stack, and then run it back with you know some someone from Baltimore. Even you could do you know Mark Andrews in that same game that Bobby's got tagged here as well. You can run back a golf stack with Mark Andrews. I like that a lot. I'm probably gonna have a little bit of Lions in Baltimore that this. Uh, this week, I'm I'm kind of thinking that's going to be the over of the game I'm going to pick. I usually pick an over game. That might be the one I think I'm going to do. Um, mm -hmm. Zach Ertz, we've been playing a lot. Um, Darren Waller was getting a lot of work early in this in the season. We don't know who's who's throwing him the ball this week. I, I don't know who's throwing the ball this week, but who? Uh, um, Giants is is Jones isn't back, is he? Good to go. Is he good to go? As of oh, right now, I'm assuming he's playing. I I'm he's still he's questionable, but, um, you know, he was looking at Waller's way quite a bit. The last play of the game went for an end zone shot to Waller, too. His price only 5000 It's pretty reasonable. I don't mind the play against Washington. Um, but I do like the cheap tight ends, as always. We like some of these guys. Like, I like the Knox call. You know, if you want to go back to Noah Fant, um, you can. Parham's getting some work. Eifert's getting some work, but the problem is they both get a little bit. Parham, I think, caught all the balls, and then Eifert caught the touchdown. It makes no sense for the Chargers. Parham's catching all the balls in the in the field, and then Ever Eifert's play, Gerald Everett's play was in the end zone. So talk about wild that is. It's just hard to go there, guys, when you don't know who's getting the work and you really want one guy to get all the work. 
Kyle right. Pitts, another one there, kind of lower own. He's been seeing some up, up uptick touchdown last week. You know, a lot more balls going his way at 4K. That's a viable pivot, I think, as well. Um, I know Bobby likes some of stacking up some of that on FanDuel and stuff. Um, some cheap plays around it as well. So, um, yeah, I'm going to be kind of on these main tight ends that I always play. Probably a lot more Kelsey's price up a little bit, but that game, we really like that game this week. Yep, absolutely. Uh, I'm going to go after it, even though I, I am very concerned because I think the Chiefs defense is really good. Um, I think it's just a, a, a blip, but I still think that uh, these both these teams can score on anybody. So it's, I think we should we should hit the over on that one too. Um, you think so? Yeah, I like that. Yeah, and I like the, the Chargers' way- offense. I think I think they just need to not take their foot on put their foot on the pedal all the time. They are. Yeah. Or they take it off the pedal. I mean, they, they should just go, 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 and they would be fine. They try to win games by running timeout or doing not their offense and three and out, and then they're like, oh, my God, the other team's going to score. Like, Four just and- score all the time. Just score. Or run the ball five times in a row, four times in a row or whatever from their own 25 and not, you know, gain seven yards, and they still they turn it over on down to the 30. Like, it's just a really weird, weird stuff they do. They got a lot of quirky stuff going on. I tell you what, I watch them a little bit. That's for sure. Um by the way, for what it's worth, I do want to point out that I didn't get my DFS play of the day, but I did get the, the call I, I made on the air last week, the 30 to 1 play, payout. You did. And I actually went wrong with what the thing was. But how about that, man? You take one bet of the week, the parlay, and it comes through. The Cleveland the Cleveland beating San Francisco and Detroit by uh, – it turned out it was actually had to be minus 9.5, not minus 6.5, which I'm glad I found out later on after the game was over. But um, that was a pretty, pretty cool one. So – I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna have another one this week uh, that, that I'll come up with by Sunday, but I'll I'll get into the defenses really quickly first. Um, I actually right now I'm only playing four defenses that I've got. I'm gonna spread it out because it's just what you're supposed to do. Um, but I'm still gonna be highest on the Browns of any defense. Uh, I think this is a great spot to to play them. I understand that they're they're a little more expensive for cheap options. I think that the Cardinals and the Ravens are my favorite of the cheap options. Um, just sort of hope that Goff, you know, goes back to old Goff outdoors thing. Um, but uh, Cardinals, uh, Seahawks, Ravens, Browns, and a little bit of Steelers, I guess, would be my uh, my favorites this week. Okay, nice, nice. Well, you know, I like some of the cheap guys. Let's go sort by salary for a minute. We do have a twenty one hundred dollar one, but that was probably not the best one. Chargers at twenty two hundred. Cardinals is a, a Bobby play here that you talk about. Don't mind that. We obviously like the game stack there, but cheap defense, you know, Ravens is a cheap defense, but we like the game stack there. So um, the reason I like those games is because I think they're going to score overs. So that's another reason, but we need to find a cheap defense. Um, there's no reason the Broncos keep getting torched, but the, no one's going to play them. You could play them. You know, Love's not been looking the greatest. He overthrowing a lot of balls. An easy pick from uh, him so 2600 I don't mind them and the Lions defense at 2700 with Lamar running a lot you know turns it over a little bit fumble carries the ball way out you know how he does his thing you know never know you mm-hmm. know so I, I like some of those cheap defenses and then obviously the Browns at 3300 and a couple of these spend up defenses we really like um here so I wouldn't say like these are that expensive defenses in the 3k where I like to usually spend this mid 2k as much, but I think I think these defenses here in the middle are viable this week as well. Yeah, and we also have like it's not that we have like this incredible. I mean, we have potential value at running back, obviously. Yeah, we have potential value at receiver. A lot, a lot of guys with potential stuff around them. So you, I didn't find it quite as as much of a need to dumpster dive. And the best game with all the guys like you have Palmer at forty eight hundred in that game. Really, the only expensive guys are Allen and Kelsey, and then the quarterbacks. So, like, I just found myself being able to spend a little bit more on defenses. That's why I went that route. Um, I'm going to say my hot take, and it's it's too hot a take probably, but it's we're talking about the millionaire maker. I'm not going to say that he's going to be a winning lineup. I'm going to say that you all are going to wish you played Jamison Williams this week. Um, I think he puts up 20 fantasy points. Uh, that, that's, it's, a, it's my bold call. Not saying that he's, it's more likely than not. It's going to happen soon. Um, it's just a matter of when, and I am going to say that Jamison Williams is going to be maybe not in the, the the winning lineup, but probably in the optimal lineup. So I, I like the Jamison Williams in my as my crazy one. And then as far as games go, I, I'm going to try and do another one. But I, I do like the the idea of parlaying both those overs, the Detroit Baltimore and the Kansas City uh, LA Charger game. I think those both feel more like overs to me 
Um, I think you might even include uh, Seattle, Arizona, and Denver and Green Bay. I'm considering maybe doing like a three-way parlay with some of that stuff. So those are my sort of weekly t- week long takes. Yeah, I like those. Uh, I like those calls. Jamison Williams fits in kind of with my hot take. I definitely think the Lions are gonna do well here. You know, I'm obviously I hear about this almost every day. You know, when I'm talking to people, I live in Michigan. Everyone's all in on these lines. I got my Packers turn on this week. <laughs> um, you know, but yeah, I, I'd like that game to go over, and I think I'm gonna have to stack it up. So you know, like maybe like a Jamison Williams, Sam Laporta, Ama Brown type stack, Jamison Williams type stack there. You know, I, I like that stack, and I think I think that's going to be my hot take of the week. We're going to go with that stack and that over on that game. So maybe we do a double Laporta Andrews lineup or something. Yeah, <laughs> you talked a little bit about that last week when you were going in on a couple of tight ends that you liked from that same game, um, that one game you you, you like, but it, it didn't work out last week. But that doesn't mean it won't work out this week. Andrews and Sam Laporta are both pretty good as well. And you just got to hit the right week where they score 25, 30 points each, two touchdowns each, and a bunch of catches. And tight ends could be viable. You know, at their price tags are very cheap. So better than a cheap receiver if they get 30, 25, mm-hmm. 30. Absolutely. All right, Rody, I'm going to let you take us out of here. All right, guys. Hope you enjoyed the show. I'll get it posted as Zoom's telling me we're running out of time. So as always, guys, let's get it.